Hello and welcome to Lines, Polygons and Symbols in GMT, the introduction to basic GMT operation. Uh, today we're going to write some bash scripts, that's why I got my text editor open here. Um, the shebang is already in there, so let's dive right in. Lines and polygons is our first chapter. So first we need to build a small text file, just a text file with two coordinates in there, nothing fancy. We call it line.txt. And then we start our GMT modern mod session by writing GMT begin. There's also GMT classic mode, don't worry about it. That's mainly a legacy thing or for people who need very, very fine-grained control about what's happening under the hood. I would say more than 90% of GMT users never need uh, the classic mode. So GMT modern mode it is, GMT begin. Then you do all your plotting, and then everything that begins must come to an end as well. So GMT end finalizes the plot and outputs the figure. You need to specify one or two more things. One is a file name. I call this plot lines. And if you're fine with uh, PFD as an output uh, format, you're good to go. I prefer mine to be a raster image, a PNG, so I specify the file format as well. And as we are manipulating the script quite a bit, um, there's a shortcut as well to have the image displayed right away after it's been generated, just at show at the end. So we're going to use the uh, plot command quite heavily today. So we invoke the GMT program and with a plot module, and we need to specify what we want to plot. That would be our text file, line.txt. So we specify it here, and we can run the script right away. That would be the output, not exactly what we were hoping for, at least we got a line. So that needs quite a bit of styling and formatting. So for the moment, back to the drawing board, here we are. Uh, we need to tell what kind of projection or what kind of coordinate system we want to have. And uh, we go with the Cartesian coordinate system today. That's JX and it plots a coordinate system that's 22 centimeters wide by 10 centimeters tall. And we also have to specify the uh, values or the range of values we are interested in. And that's from 0 to 11 in the x-axis and from 0 to 5 in the y-axis. If you run the script again, we get this figure that looks a bit more like what we were looking for. Um, still, there are no axes, there are no annotations. That's what we have to tackle next. Uh, back in our script, um, the annotations and axes are invoked with the B option. And uh, B is quite a, quite a powerful beast, but for easy things like this, it's quite tame. So we want annotations every one unit. So we just call minus B, small a, and one. And if you run it now again, now we got something that resembles a plot that we would recognize. And uh, yeah, the only thing left to do basically is styling the line a little bit, because that's the GMT standard pen, not really fashionable. I prefer a bit thicker one, so we need to specify a pen. A uh, pen is specified via minus w, and then you add pen, uh, pen width. I go with uh, a nine point wide pen. One point is one seventy second of, a, of an inch. And uh, if you run the strip now, we got this plot, nice fat line, still only black and white, so we could use some color here. Let's go and add red color. Just as easy as that, just call red, just call the color behind the pen, and name it red, and off you go. Here we are with a nice fat red pen. Um, if you want to learn more about specifying pens, um, it's a good thing to look in the documentation. docs.generic-mapping-tools.org, your place to go for everything GMT related. Uh, the main page looks a bit daunting at first. My three go-to places are modules and the cookbook in the lower the right hand side under reference documentation, as well as the default settings slash gmtconf under the quick links. If you uh, take a closer look at the cookbook um, under chapter 3.14 specifying pen attributes, you basically find everything you want to know about uh, how to specify a pen. Uh, Talking about color in pens, or colors in general in GMT, you can throw almost anything at GMT. It takes uh, color names, RGB values, hex values, uh, HSV, um, CMYK, or just gray values. Basically everything you can think of, you can throw at GMT and it'll plot a nice color for you. Back to our script. Um, what's about having a dashed line? So you're not a fan of a solid red line, you want a dashed red line, 
that's quite easy as well. There's a shortcut for that. Um, just add a dash behind the color, run the script, and GMT automation automation does its thing. Here you got your dashed line. Um, maybe you prefer a dotted line over a dashed line. So back to the script. There's a shortcut as well. Get rid of the dash, replace it with a dot, run the script again, and here's your dotted line. Maybe you're even fancier and want a combination out of dots and dashes. Just add a dot, a dot and a dash, run it again. Here you go. And you can even add further combinations like two dashes or two dots or whatever you fancy. And it'll happily print that. Print that. If you prefer a bit more control over what's being, uh, how, the, how the lines are being plotted, um, there also is somewhat of a manual mode uh, where you specify the length of your dash and the length of your gap. So let's say you want a 20 units long dash, just write 20, and followed by a 20 units long gap, that would be underscore 20. There is your dash gap dash line. And you can vary those values as much as you want. And if you want to do something like that dot dash thingy we did before, you can just keep on expanding the pattern Let's say you want a, a short dash that's only five units long, followed by a 20 units long gap. That would be underscore five, underscore 20. And if you run that, here you go. Here is your small little personal line. There are even more ways to style your personal line. Um, talking about line endings, here they're quite a bit uh, squarish or very square. Um, we can alter that a bit to show the difference a bit better. I'm just go ahead and plot the same line again. So call GMT plot again, line text, the file we want to plot. No need to copy over G, J and R. They are copied behind the scenes. So we just go ahead and specify hand right away. This time only one point wide. The color would be white, so we got a nice contrast to the red line, and the pattern is just the same as before. If you run that script, yeah, it's not looking very good, but uh, bear with me for a moment, because now the fancy stuff begins. Uh, in the common options, we can alter the uh, post strip line endings. Um, that would be with the red line, just by extending the command. Now we extend it to the second line, that's the backslash, what the backslash is for. And then we call postscript line cap. And if you look into the, when, if you want to look into the details, have a look at the default settings, gmtconf, those here, scroll a bit down and you find all the options you have available. In our case, we are interested in the round line cap ending. And here you go. And as you see, the lines are now a little bit extended with a semicircle on each side that's nicely illustrated by how long the white lines are compared to the red lines. Um, if you have round lines and squared lines combined, maybe you want to have the same gaps on your, on your square and lines as well. Uh, that's what you can use the square, squared uh, line caps for. Get rid of the round, replace it by square. Here you go, you see it's almost the same as the round ones, except for the edges are a bit sharper now. But as those two types of uh, line caps vary or extend the line a little bit and therefore vary the width of uh, the, the gaps a little bit, um, if you combine those two lines, it's quite good to use square and round together. The default mode would be but, so B-U-T-T. Um, that's basically the line just ends with a rectangular side um, where you started, that looks like this. Get rid of the uh, white line as well. And now we got our solid line back. Um, generally, looking at that stuff, we um, add a kink in our line. So just another coordinate in here. And now we got, in, now we got a bend in there. If you're into more rounded appearance or, um, appearance or into uh, yeah, spline basically. That's quite easy to accomplish as well. If you look at our script, just append plus s to the append definition and here's your spline. Be aware though, this only works in 2D space, so no joy on the globes or any kind of uh, geo projection, so to speak. Get rid of that. Here's our line again. Get rid of our extra way, uh, our extra corner that we just inserted. Uh, but now we put in two more. 
And as you can see, the first and the fourth coordinate are actually the same. That tells GMT that now you want to plot a closed polygon. And uh, that looks something like this out of the box. Uh, that's all default settings expect, except for the, for the pen, width and uh, color. And you can see in the lower left corner, the coordinate at 1, 1. Um, we got a nice mitre join there. So it's not two lines ending but on but, but it's actually a nice closed polygon. Um, we can also influence how um, lines are joined or the corners are joined. It's also a postscript uh, line option, in this case postscript line join, and it has bevel for example. Bevel means that you cut off the corners of all your joints basically. You also have round which makes for nice rounded appearance and the default option would be mitre, so just get rid of all that stuff. No need to call it Admittedly, that's leads to those pointy edges. As you can see on the right hand side, that's a bevel joint nonetheless, because if those very small angles would be um, plotted as a mitre joint, they would extend quite a bit. You can alter this value as well, just look at the common options, a postscript line, and you'll find a value you can alter. Now we got a closed polygon, time to fill it. Filling polygon is quite easy. Uh, minus G is uh, the fill option, so to speak, and as you might have guessed, you just append a color, let's say light orange, and here's your light orange filled polygon. Um, you can't only do this with colors. In the GMT documentation, you also find in the cookbook uh, predefined uh, patterns you can use, over 90 of them, and uh, let's have a closer look at them. Lots of them are used in geosciences all the time, and uh, let's go for the small p 19. The difference between small and capital P is uh, the small p basically with the color you can influence the ground part of the pattern and with the capital P you influence the background part of the pattern. So small p 19 should give us uh, black dots on a white background. Not very fashionable. We want to add color to this as well. So plus F for the fill color, and I'll just uh, specify a color again. In this case, orange. So now you got your orange dots on a white background. If you want to change that over, have white white dots on an orange background. Just exchange the small p letter P for the capital letter P. Run the script again, and here are your white dots on an orange background. Um, that concludes our first uh, chapter. Basically, there are some exercises for you. Draw a polygon around the coordinate system origin. Don't forget to change the range in that case, because we are only in a positive range right now. Draw a line in a 10-point white green pen and fill the polygon with a blue zigzag pattern. You can pause the video here, and when you're done, just continue. Next chapter, symbols. That's quite a powerful um, machinery behind it here in GMT. And uh, yeah, our basic script looks as usual. We have we begin a modern mode session with GMT begin. The file name would be symbols, file format will be GMT, and GMT end finalizes the plot and shows says that we want to have it displayed right away. This time we call GMT coast. Um, GMT comes with the coast module, which is awesome because it gives you the coastlines of the world. It also comes with the um, uh, borders and boundaries of the world, but for our purposes, the coast is just fine. Um, we need to tell Coast the kind of projection we are using. That would be a Mercator projection, your everyday, everywhere world map projection. We specify the uh, central meridian, so the greenish meridian, and the shard or the map should be 20 centimeters wide. We also need to specify the range of interest that would be from 87 degrees west to 50 degrees east, on the x-axis, so to speak, and on the y-axis from 57 degrees south to 60 degrees north. We need to, special, uh, to um, specify one more thing, would be a pen, how to draw the coastline basically. That would be uh, 0 0.5 points wide and the color is uh, darkish gray. If we run the script, we get something like this. And as you can see, um, it's a bit hard to distinguish between land and sea. So let's tint the sea in a, in a gray color. Let's invoke by minus S, just add the gray color, that's a lightish gray. Run it again, and here you go. 
what you also see um, in this overview map, there are quite a few features in the northern latitudes in northern Canada, for example, or northern Europe, or also down there in southern Chile, um, which clutters the map quite a bit. So there's an option for this as well. We just invoke the A option and say, okay, everything that's smaller than 300 kilometers just omit it. And this leads to a bit less clutter on the map. And what we're still missing is an outline and also some annotations. You know already what's going to happen next. We invoke the B option, but now without any further things, just B and let GMT do the rest. So here we got a, an automated fancy border and annotations every 30 degrees. That would be our burst map where we start playing on now. And uh, GMT comes with quite some symbols built in already. So the uh, 14 basic geometric symbols, we are here in the, in the documentation for the plot command or the plot module. So let's print a star that would be invoked by a minus S, A and a size. The size describing the circle basically, the circumscribing circle around the symbol. So we need to pass to the plot command the coordinate where we want the, the symbol plotted at. We could do this via text file, which would be the normal way, or we can just pipe it through the echo command. So we echo the coordinates. That's somewhere on the Western Hemisphere in the southern part, it's somewhere in the Southern Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. And we pipe this to the GMT plot command and say, okay, we want a symbol, and A for the star with a size of two centimeters. And if we run that script now, here is your star in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Not very fancy, just a plain simple outline. And of course, we can manipulate um, the outline as well as the fill. That's easily done. You know the drill already. You specify a pen via minus W. It should be two points white and the color should be blue. Here we go. We got our blue outline. Um, yeah, the fill, you know the drill as well. It's minus G and then the color of your choice, orange in this case. Now you got your uh, orange star with a blue outline in the Southern Atlantic Ocean. Those are the basic simple symbols, but in GMT there are also complex symbols or custom symbols, so to speak, which are built out of different parts or different, um, yeah, different parts, let's say different parts. And in the GMT cookbook in uh, chapter 18, you'll find this uh, table basically, and we're interested in the volcano in the lowest row. So we do the same drill basically as with the star. We pipe the coordinates somewhere in the Northern Atlantic Ocean into the GMT plot command, then invoke uh, the symbol machinery and it'll be, tell them it'll be a custom symbol, that's the K, and then the name for the plot symbol, which is volcano, then a slash and the size for the symbol. And as with the star, as, as we don't specify a pen or a fill, it's just a plain simple outline. And here we do the same thing. We specify a pen and we specify a fill. And we got our orange volcano with a red outline. But you're not constrained to the uh, complex symbols uh, pre-installed with GMT. You can build your own. And as you've seen, there's no proper map symbol or uh, map marker symbol in GMT something like this. So we're going to build exactly this here. And uh, if you look at the documentation in the cookbook for the macro, lang uh, the macro language or the macro commands for uh, custom symbols, you see that we got quite a few to choose from. We keep it simple today. So we simply use the diamond, which is a, a square standing on one side and uh, the circle. Yeah, open a new text file. The important thing is, as you can see at the top, uh, the file name basically is the name you can call, uh, you call the symbol by, and it has to end in .def. So what we do first, we want to plot um, the diamond. So the center of the diamond, it's again the circumscribing cycle of, uh, circle of the diamond, is a little bit uh, to the north of your uh, symbol center. And... Uh, the circumscribing circle has the diameter of 0 0.707 and D for diamond, and we also specify a pen, 0 0.1 units. Um, we don't specify any scale here because if you would put their points or centimeters or inches, then the pen width would be fixed at this, at this exact dimension, even if you scale your symbol. If you do it dimensionless, then you 
have the advantage that the pen scales together with the plot symbol and it'll be a black outline. Let's plot that symbol. Here is your diamond standing on an edge and the southern tip of the diamond is in the middle of your uh, symbol coordinate system. Next thing would be the upper half of our map mapper symbol, which is just a plain circle. And uh, the center of the circle is the upper tip of the diamond. It has a diameter of one C for circle, and we just define the same pen as for the uh, diamond. Here we go. You see the outline for the diamond. Uh, here, you see the outline for the map symbol, or for the map marker, is already there. And now we need to get rid of those black lines in the middle of the symbol. And that's actually quite easy. We do this by the fill and we just repeat the same symbols but just without any outline. And as the color for the both symbols will be the same, they just blend into each other and looks like one solid piece. So here comes the diamond again. And now we want to make sure that we under no circumstances get any outline. And that's done by specifying a pen with a minus. So that just says there won't be any outline and specify uh, fill, the usual G option, and uh, yeah, it'll be orange. Yeah, here you go. And same goes for the circle. We specify we don't want any pen at all, but we want an orange fill. And now you got your outline. The only thing missing, missing is now the black dot in the upper part of the symbol. And that's just another circle at the same position as the big orange circle. So we just repeat it, a bit smaller diameter. We don't care about any pen, but we care about black fill. And here's your map symbol. We are now going to replace our volcano with our freshly made custom symbol. So back to our script, we get rid of everything except for invoking the custom symbol. And now as we call our new symbol map marker, just that slash and the size, it should be one centimeter wide. And uh, there we go. There's our map marker in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That concludes the part with the symbols. So here's an exercise for you. Make a plot of the continent you are living on and build a simple house custom symbol and place it where you live. Pause the video and when you're done, just continue where we left off. So as you're now done with your exercise, we can continue to our next chapter. First, we need to clean up a little bit, get rid of all those plotted symbols. So back to our basic map. And uh, yeah, now we're ready for our next chapter, which is quoted lines. Um, we plotted lines at our in the first chapter already, but uh, quoted lines means we can add quite a bit of stuff to it. So we have here two segments. In a text file, the caret basically indicates the beginning of a new segment. It's just always two coordinates and we just play, paint a line between them. So we save this at flights.txt and back to our background uh, map. So now we're going to plot exactly those two lines. And as you might have guessed, it invokes the gmt plot command. We need to specify the file we want to plot, flights.txt. And you know already that we need to specify a pen, five points wide and is red. And also I wanted round line caps for a nicer appearance. If you run that script, you can see we got a great circle line from uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina to Frankfurt in Germany, all the way down to Johannesburg in South Africa. If we look better at this, we want to add some text to those lines. And if you look into the documentation in the uh, plot command, scroll down a little bit to the wiggly line. That's quite easy to orient yourself on that one. And we are interested in the minus SQ command for quoted line. And there we're interested in the SQN option and uh, specifying the number of times the, um, the label we want to add to the line is repeated. So um, if you take a closer look at it, so we invoke the quoted line with SQN1. So we want exactly one label at the whole line. And uh, we have to specify a pen as well. That's done via plus F. And pen specification is pretty straightforward as well. It's somewhat similar to specifying a pen. First, we need a size. So we want a 12-point tall um, font. And the font we select is Helvetica Bold. That's pre-installed with GMT. 
and uh, we also need to know where to get the labels from. And we said, say we get it from the segment headers in our flights.txt file. Um, if you remember, there, aren't, there isn't anything there, so we just write some text in here. I decided on this one, Buenos Aires to Frankfurt, yada, 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 and Frankfurt to Johannesburg, just to get a nice long label. So I can show you another lead track with GMT. Back to our script. If we plot this now, now we got long labels on uh, our lines, and you can see that the label is very straight and does not conform to the great circle, which is bent to the south on the southern hemisphere and a little bit to the north on the northern hemisphere. But uh, as I already told you, there is an option to work around that. You just simply add plus V uh, to the end of your SQ option to the uh, quoted line. And now the label nicely conforms to your great circle. What else could we do? We could add some symbols to it. We already built a nice map marker, so why not go ahead and add this to our plot? So GMT plot again from the file, uh, file flights.txt. We would like to plot custom symbols with the name of map marker and the size of 0.5 centimeters. So that's all we need. If we run the script now, we got three map markers on our three airports. And uh, yeah, why not put a name there as well? That could be done with another module, which is called GMT text. But uh, first, we need to add uh, the names we want to, uh, to add there. So for Buenos Aires, we added here Frankfurt, Frankfurt, and Johannesburg again. Now we got all our places named. And then we just add those and off we go. The problem we have right now is the font is the default font, which is the regular Helvetica, and it's centered on the coordinate. So we can do this a little bit nicer, of course. And that's actually quite easy. First, we want to specify a font. That's, that's minus F plus F, and then you've seen this one before, 12 points tall, Helvetica bold. And uh, now we got a proper font but still centered, unfortunately, directly on the coordinates. Not actually what we were looking for. So we need to do something about that. Uh, yeah, Taking a view into the documentation helps quite a bit. If you take a close look in the cookbook, uh, chapter 3.19, placement of text, you can see that there are uh, nine different positions where you can orient your text to your actual coordinate. And depending on which side you want it, for example, you want it a bit uh, up from, the, from your coordinate and, and to the left, that would be uh, right bottom point, the right lower point. So RB would, your, would be your um, string of choice. We're going to add those now to our um, coordinates or to our flight.txt file. And as the text from the label is always in the last column, we have to put it beforehand. So for Buenos Aires, we want it to extend to the left of our coordinate. So the uh, text will be attached on the uh, lower right-hand point. So right and bottom. Frankfurt to the other side, left bottom. Again, Frankfurt and Johannesburg, similar to Buenos Aires, right-hand side, bottom side. If you... And now we also need to specify that uh, the text module has to look into the, uh, into the text file. It is, uh, which is plotting for the justification. So we just add plus j for justification. And now if we run the script, the uh, text labels are moved away from our coordinate. But still not enough. It still interferes with the line as well as with the symbol. And that's where the minus dj option comes into place. It displaces uh, the, uh, the label basically for a certain amount, in this case, 11 points away in the x direction and 7 points away in the y direction. So if you run the script again, you see now we got nice labels all around. That's almost finished our little session here. Now we talked about uh, how we can place labels on lines and close to coordinates and how we can make our own custom symbols with our primitive forms and all that stuff. But there's another way how you can do a custom symbol, and that's not via a DEF file. That's uh, via an encapsulated postscript, basically. And uh, 
I found this image here on the internet on, on the Wikimedia Commons. And uh, basically it was a raster image. I vectorized it, removed the sky. And now we're going to place that 747 somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. And yeah, you know how this works already. Um, first, we need to pipe a coordinate where we want to place the label into the plot command. So here's our echo. Here's the pipe into GMT plot. And then we specify a custom label, and this one's called B747. The slash and the size should be 10 centimeters long. And here we go. Now we got our 747 flying over the Atlantic Ocean. So that concludes our last chapter for this block, basically. And uh, yeah, if you have a look at it, if you want to have a look, the last look at that script. And uh, here I got a little bit of an exercise for you again. Basically just what we just did. Uh, draw two quoted lines to two different cities on your continent and label the lines with the city names and fill the uh, land polygon with an orange pattern of your choice. So that concludes my uh, introduction into lines, polygons and symbols in GMT. Thank you for staying with me that long and have a wonderful day.